they've met a lot in bracket this past year. Everyone going to Brody, but the last few being closer than than before. In this matchup, this is that uh, quintessential Smash 64 matchup we've been seeing at high level since Genesis 3, Wario Boom Fan. Everyone's so familiar. The meta for this matchup has come so far, and people are so familiar uh, with what to do from both sides. But it's still, it just feels like this is that one matchup where Pikachu maybe doesn't have the advantage. Yeah. We've, we've seen a few other uh, players um, maybe make a case for other characters, but they're just so few and far in between. Uh, compared to Falcon, which has like that Boom, Alvin, and uh, players that are consistently beating those Pikachus. Right. And uh, EG does keep it even, though. Yeah, and uh, I would say that Brody's very familiar with this matchup, so if you're a Pika player and looking to figure out what to do, I think keep an eye on his. So he's so good at getting that grab. Yeah. I think Falcons usually win that for the most part. Um, and it just uh, it makes it look like the grab range is so much larger than it is because it's just grabbing that distorted hitbox from Falcon during the initial dash. Right. Uh, and it just looks funky when it goes halfway across the stage. Oh, nice nair there. Yeah, Brody's been all over EG on his recoveries, uh, not really being able to recover the same way he has been uh, earlier today against them. So let's see. Uh, oh, he runs in with a short hop nair. And the back here, not much off of that, but... Ooh. Oh, catches him slipping, just letting go of the ledge. Yeah, Falcon backward facing uh, down air off the stage. Catches Pika's a lot. That's very nice to slip off the stage with that down air. He's able to just do a double jump nair. Mm -hmm. EG looking uh, like he's... A little frustrated, yeah. but probably just kind of coaching himself, uh, figuring out what he wants to do game two. That looked like if like an actor portraying frustration. Like if I was his <laughs> acting coach, I would have been like, I think you're hitting it a little too obvious on the head. Let's go for something a little more subtle. <laughs> you're indicating, I think, EG, you know? It's just, uh, so, oh, and Brody tries to fly in with that Nair again. Oh, and just reads that tech every time and perfect timing on it. But we know how good Brody is with those uh, up Bs to uh, escape the pressure. Oh. Ooh, and a, he misses uh, that up B during Brody's tech. Yeah, maybe just a frame too early. Oh, Somehow great. makes it back. Yeah, it's a great recovery. Brody was able to land tech working out for him. Ooh. He does that straight over and then up, up B, but he's caught by the down air. Brody's another very aggressive player as well. Yeah, I, I don't ever see him really try to let up the pressure. Oh, that was nice. They're running. Uh, Puts out that Nair early. I think that EG thought he was coming in for a grab, potentially, after after that tech. Tried that up, air, up smash. And this time, he slips under that down air. Yeah. Um, and back to neutral now, kind of fighting for center stage. And <laughs> I don't know if that uh, dash attack was on purpose, but <laughs> he's got to pay for it. And a good weaving from uh, EG there and turning it into an up smash. Not quite timing the tech read correctly. But uh, yeah, he's kind of in, he's getting some good reads on Brody now. Yeah, and he's t got a two stock lead here as well. I think Brody kind of panicked there where he had his back to the stage and. Uh, wow, some oh, good DI just there. It. Yeah, to give him a second chance. <gasps> And great DI, just avoiding the stage uh, altogether. And he opts for the Nair there because I think Brody had DI'd so far back that that up air might have missed. Yeah, and just great awareness from EG just catching that. And Brody should live here, but it's going to be tough for him to get back. Yeah, it was a really good DI. I mean, he, he could have gotten, you know, spiked from that second down air. And of course, he took the up B after that, but he survived, so he's got another lease at life here. But he's <laughs> down a lot of stocks. Yeah, he's going to have to really convert all his hits after this to have a chance in this game. Oh, and that's... No. That's a trade he'll take, but he's at 129. 
Yeah, just about any straight hit from EG here will do the job. Uh, he does have to stay safe. Yeah, that's a there it is. That fresh up air. Yeah, very nice. Rising up air on the short hop. Uh, we'll grab a, an approaching Pikachu, a, a Pikachu approaching uh, via short hop. It's very good at snagging them out of the air. Yeah, generally used more so for uh, combos and neutral. Um, but EG knows that'll work just as well at kill percent as well. Um, yeah, I think it's a bit safer than trying a, you know, to, to challenge your, with a forward air, you know, if he's yeah. approaching it in the air as well and you're facing him. Um, yeah, I mean, Falcon's up air is just an uh, incredibly good move. Just feels very safe as well as, uh, it's like a Swiss Army knife of moves. Yeah, it's so good. That reverse hitbox for the, almost for the spiking. Yep, and then you got that weird, like, very top hitbox that hits him forward. Yeah, forward and out <laughs> to the... And EG just, uh, he's paying a lot of attention to what Brody wants to hit um, his recovery with. He's had a lot of um, success using Sage GI where he needs it, um, and there he just straight up avoids the forward smash. Um, Brody not letting him get by that time, though. No, he actually missed a, a running plat drop on the right side of the of the stage, and he uh, he rolled on the platform. So Brody was able to lead to that uh, stock conversion. <laughs> oh, and EG in a kind of puts himself in a cornered position here. Oh, and he was kind of looking like he was going to crouch cancel something there. He is. Probably too high of a percentage to do much off the crouch cancel. And Brody now up uh, three socks to two. Not a huge lead, but with how EG's been playing, he's going to take everything he can get. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he lost significantly last game. I think EG had, what, two full stocks there? Yeah. Oh, and that's a great down air from EG while Brody was coming out trying that nair. And Brody does land the nair, but it trades, and he almost loses his stock there. That was a really heads up play from EG. I didn't even see the dare come out either. It was so quick. Yeah, it was pretty quick. and He had low percentage, so he was hit by that nair. And the, the down air, not only did it trade and almost take Brody's stock, but it kept Brody off the stage in a way so that he, he could recover. Yeah, and EG there just getting that reverse ledge DI into a shield jump after the tech in place, um, turning around the situation. That was good from uh, Brody to sort of react to, react to that down tilt because it looked like he was going to try to sweet spot the uh, the right side of the stage and uh, EG down tilts to cover that so he had to zip to the other side. Nice edge guard. Drop. Yeah, keeping it simple. Yeah, drop down with the back air. And uh, you're going to see Brody do that a lot where he either jumps away towards uh, the opponent to force them back further. Um, and he also just likes snapping ledge to take away that option. Yeah. I think a lot of the times he, he'll threaten Falcons as well. Like, he'll fly out there, and then he'll he'll make it so that their only option, based on their, their spacing, is to sweet spot the ledge, and then he'll just edge hog. Yeah. Oh, and EG got a chance to take it up uh, another oh. game, and that'll wow. do it. And I, honestly, I didn't know about that down air. Uh, I thought maybe he should have just kept it standard, but... Proved me wrong there. It was really nice. He follows it with another down air to up B to go up two to one here against uh, Brody. Yeah. Um, I got to say, that was just impressive with his decision making. Uh, maybe he thought that up B just wouldn't quite reach, uh, but being so confident in that uh, down air, catching that tech in place. Yeah, he's playing confidently. He's playing aggressively, and he's he's staying, sticking with, with his game. You know, he's not. Oh, there's that down air again. Yeah. Just a great check to Brody's recovery when he wants to come way out there to challenge him. And Brody misses with that. Oh, wow. That was insane. And and that's a trade EG's going to take, especially in that position. Oh, yeah. And Brody's going to wait it out. They're both going to kind of wait it out to hope their invincibility will last as long as possible. And that's tough because I don't even. Oh, he does have a double jump still. Yeah, and I liked what I saw from EG with the angel invincibility. Um, he saw that Brody's invincibility ran out would run out like a second sooner than his, and he just kept right on top of him, just chasing him all across the um, stage. Yeah, and then he just puts out another down air there to cover that recovery, and he's up a stock here. Yeah, and EG now just slowing down the pace, uh, just challenging Brody to come in. 
That was a great recovery. Brody was in a pretty uh, <laughs> precarious situation there with a very, very good recovery. Sweet spots the stage. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that angle. Neither have I. And that was I, crazy. I honestly thought he was going to miss uh, miss low slightly. And EG uh, maybe going a little too hard with that fast fall dare. Um, and Brody more than ready to punish it. You Call. called out, and now Brody is on his last stock on the winner's side here. Potentially, if, if EG can take this, that would be huge for him. It would be a huge upset. Oh, and he's got the grab. Up and air this and is up gonna B. Be close. That'll, That'll do, do it. it. Wow. And what e an upset. EG, three to one, takes out Brody. And man, I did not expect that, especially considering that Brody, you know, Brody's solid at that matchup. He gets a lot of practice with his brother, Dark Horse. Shout yeah. outs to, to Jason Brody as well.